Hello and welcome to the Thursday, November 3rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and Snob Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad's diary from today goes a little bit a different route than what he usually does. He's not looking at sort of one specific infection, but really more looking at how a particular tool, Dark VNC, evolved over time. Now, first time that uh, Pratt was able to find, or the earliest sample that Pratt was able to find is sort of from the 2012-2013 timeframe, but then he hasn't seen it much, sort of just occasionally, until sort of uh, mid-2021, when it sort of really showed up much more common. You're probably familiar with the tool VNC, the virtual network computing, which is a remote admin tool, legitimate tool, often, of course, abused. But that's not what we talk about here. Dark VNC or another variant, sometimes called hidden VNC, essentially uses the same sort of network protocol and capabilities. So from an attacker's point of view, it looks very similar, but it removes some of the indicators that a user may see of this tool running on their system. That, of course, makes it ideal for malicious remote access to a system. And Brad is going over some of the network traffic patterns that you may see if a system is infected with dark VNC VNC, hidden VNC, the network traffic for all these tools uh, looks somewhat uh, similar. And well, I haven't really seen a lot of sort of uh, news articles uh, reporting about the open source uh, security foundation finally releasing version 1.0. So the general availability release of Sixstor. Sixstor is an interesting project that tries to sort of uh, fix one gap when it comes to open source software supply chain security, and that's identifying uh, packages that are actually authentic. Sixstore is basically a free service that can be used for code signing, and it hopes to prevent some of the attacks that we have so often heard about recently, like, uh, for example, good NPM packages being swapped for malicious ones and the like uh, by essentially allowing you to verify whether or not a particular package is authentic. This is supposed also to work for Docker images and other essentially sort of code projects in general. Compared a little bit maybe to sort of the Let's Encrypt, but here for software signatures instead of for uh, TLS certificates. We'll see how it all works out, how it's going to be adopted, but the number of sort of big open source industry heavyweights have already backed this initiative. So if you are developing, publishing open source uh, libraries, resources and such, you definitely uh, should take a look and see if this is something that you would like uh, to use. And to make things easier, like one of the big industry heavyweights that's sort of backing this is GitHub. And they announced today that, for example, for uh, signing NPM packages, they will integrate uh, with a six store. So uh, certainly uh, that should make uh, integration with it and such uh, too uh, difficult. And well, uh, next story is again about a security tool kind of turning against you. I've talked many times in the past about a virus total and how you shouldn't submit sort of random documents to virus total because essentially everything you submit to virus total is more or less public. Well, it uh, turns out virus total isn't the only such service that you need to be careful with. urlscan.io. This is as it describes itself, a sandbox for the web. So you can submit URLs uh, to URL scan. It will then download the page and uh, look for malicious code and the like. Well, um, of course, the URLs that people are scanning for can also be retrieved via urlscan.io. And if you have automated tools that will, for example, submit URLs in emails and the like, well, uh, those URLs may contain some sensitive data. Think about, for example, custom URLs that are created by like uh, products, uh, let's say, for example, Dropbox and such to share documents. Well, uh, they can leak via URL scan and find 
Fabian Breulein uh, did uh, introduce sort of a methodology where uh, this uh, can then be exfiltrated more or less automatically uh, with a couple of interesting search queries against uh, URL scan. One example Fabian is using here is uh, their leakage uh, via GitHub, uh, but basically any kind of service that attaches sensitive information to the URL is potentially vulnerable here. Bad idea to attach sensitive information to the URLs in general, but uh, well, it happens. So uh, be careful what you're submitting to these security tools. And finally, just quickly want to point your attention uh, to a CheckMK, a tool that's being used uh, to monitor IT infrastructure. SonarSource has an interesting blog how if you chain a couple recent vulnerabilities in the tool, you can actually achieve a remote code execution. These kind of tools are always in, of interest to attackers. So if you're using it, take a look at the attack and what you can do to prevent it. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.